In this example, we're going to be looking at the strength of an HSS 12 by 6 by half that's used as a tension member. The HSS is slotted at its end and fit around a concentric gusset plate and welded with four 12 inch long fillet welds. The tube is made out of A500 grade C steel. Let's get started. These types of concentric gusset plate connections are commonly used when an HSS member is applied in either compression or tension. This is a photo of an HSS used as a compression member supporting an upper level of seating in Nippert Stadium on the University of Cincinnati campus. Looking at the joint, you can see that a slot was cut in the walls of the tube and then the tube was fit around the gusset plate before it was welded into place. Here's another example of a concentric gusset plate connection, this time used in a brace frame configuration. In this case, you can clearly see that the erection bolts are left in place after the welds were made between the wall of the HSS and the gusset plate. Here is a third example. This time we have a deep tube that's supporting a window system and a large atrium of one of the buildings on the University of Cincinnati campus. And if you look at the end of that member, you can see that the uh, concentric gusset plate is just barely protruding from the drywall that has covered up the rest of the joint. Taking a closer look at this joint from the side, you can see that the slot that was fabricated to accommodate the concentric gusset plate was cut a little bit longer than the gusset plate, and this is typical, and the net section that we'll investigate will cut through that opening there. Note also that the fabricator in this case chose to weld right up to the end of the concentric gusset plate, whereas in a lot of, lot of cases the fabricator will hold that weld short or stop that weld short of the edge of the gusset plate. We'll investigate the strength limit states of gross section yielding and net section fracture in this example problem. Gross section yielding is known as tension yielding in the AISC specification and that occurs on a section that is sufficiently far away from the end of the member, usually about uh, one and a half to two times a major dimension, or in this case, 18 to 24 inches away from the gusset. Net section fracture, or tension rupture as it's known in the AISC specification, occurs at the end of the member where material is removed to accommodate the connection. In this case, we'll cut a net section through the slot between the slot and the end of the weld where there is a net section or material that's been removed, but where there isn't any connection between the uh, HSS and the uh, concentric gusset plate. Serviceability limit states should also be investigated. Uh, in this case, for a tension member, that would be slenderness or uh, vibrations, where we make sure that L over R for the member doesn't exceed 300. In this case, frankly, uh, the radius of gyration of an HSS member is large enough that uh, vibration shouldn't be a problem for any reasonably length tension member. The first strength limit that we'll investigate is gross section yielding, and in this case, the nominal strength, P sub N, is taken as the product of F sub Y and A sub G, the yield stress in the material and the gross area of the cross section. We'll go to Table 2-4 of the AISC Steel Construction Manual to determine the yield strength of the member. Zooming in a little bit, you can see that for a rectangular HSS, A500 grade C is a preferred material, and the yield stress is 50 KSI, and the tensile stress is 62 KSI. Also note, however, that these members are available in A1085 material as well, where the yield stress would be 50 KSI, but the tensile stress would be 65 KSI. Anyways, for this example, we use F sub Y equal 50 KSI and F sub U equal 62 KSI. Next, we'll turn to Table 1-11 of the AISC manual to determine the cross-sectional area of the HSS 12 by 6 by half. And zooming in a little bit, you can see that for the 12 by 6 by half, we have an area A of 15.3 inches squared. Substituting in values for F sub Y and A sub G, we find that the nominal strength is 765 kips. Applying a resistance factor of 0 0.9 for gross yielding, we find that the design strength for gross section yielding is 688.5 kips. 
Next, we'll look at a net section fracture strength, and P sub N, the nominal strength, is equal to F sub U times A sub E, where A sub E is the effective net area of the section, taken as U times A sub N, where U is the shear lag reduction coefficient and A sub N is the net area. Looking first at the net area, we take the net area A sub N as the gross area minus the area that's lost when the slots are fabricated in the end of the member for the gusset. So we take the area of the slots as the width of the slots times the wall thickness of the tube. We'll return to table 1-11 of the manual where we find that the design wall thickness of the tube is 0.465 inches. Remember that the design wall thickness of an HSS is smaller than the nominal thickness of an HSS. So the design wall thickness of a tube is taken as 93% of the nominal thickness. So calculating the net area, we take the gross area, 15.3 inches squared, and we subtract out the area lost for two slots, one on each of the opposite walls of the tube. And those slots are each cut for a one inch thick gusset plate, and the slots are made an eighth of an inch wider than the thickness of the gusset. Now that value isn't standardized, at least not to my knowledge. I just assumed that an eighth of an inch uh, of tolerance would be appropriate for a gusset plate of that thickness. I've added an additional sixteenth of an inch for possible damage around the, uh, the edge of the slot as it was fabricated, and then we multiply by the design wall thickness 0.465 inches. So the net area that we'll use is 14.2 inches squared. Next, we'll refer to table D3.1 of the AISC specification, and we find that case 5 of that table applies to our situation where we have a rectangular HSS with a concentric gusset plate. Zooming in a little more closely, we can see that U is taken as 1 minus X bar over L, where X bar is the distance from the face of the concentric gusset to the centroid of half of the section that remains after cutting the slot for the gusset plate. Note that this is a new provision in the 2022 edition of the AISC specification. Older editions of the specification included a slightly different equation for the shear lag reduction coefficient for this case. So implementing those definitions for U and X bar, we recognize that B is the breadth of the tube and H is the height of the tube, where B is never greater than H, even when the tube is rotated as is shown here. Note in the equation for X bar that T is the design wall thickness of the tube, T sub P is the thickness of the gusset plate that the tube is attached to, and that lowercase b is measured from the face of the gusset plate to the outer wall of the tube. X bar is measured from the face of the gusset plate to the centroid of half of the tube that would remain after the slot is made. So we can calculate the value of lowercase b, and for this case we find that it's equal to two and a half inches. And then we can substitute those values into our equation for X bar and find that X bar is equal to 1.951 inches. Finally, we substitute that into our equation for U using the weld length of 12 inches, and we find that our shear lag reduction coefficient U is equal to 0 0.8374. Finally, substituting in F sub U equals 62 KSI, U equals 0 0.8374, and A sub N equal to 14.2 inches squared, we find that the nominal strength with respect to a net section fracture is 737.3 kips, and applying a resistance factor of 0 0.75 for net fracture, we find that the design strength is 553.0 kips. In summary, we have a gross yielding design strength, phi times P sub N, of 688.5 kips, and we have a net section fracture design strength, phi times P sub N, of 553 kips. The lower of those two governs, and our available strength is equal to 553 kips.